In this tutorial, I'll be going through the Curve Fade Animation node. So the Curve Fade node allows you to add changing parameters of any of the numerical properties within your material, and it does so over a specified period of time. So I'm going to be changing the opacity of a material, and we're also going to be changing the bump map slightly. So as you can see here, I've got an animation here of six seconds long. If I play through it, should be able to sort of see it's comprised of about of three shots and of two seconds each. And the material we've got at the moment is just an interior diffuse white. So if I open up the material graph, you can see we've got the parent node and a diffuse node. So if I right click on the background, we can go down to animation and we have two options here, the color fade and the curve fade. So I'm gonna choose the curve fade, double click there, and uh, we have two different drop down sections here. So we have the animation time settings where we have the start, the end, and therefore the duration. And uh, as you can see, our animation is currently just going for a duration of one second between the start of the animation, so zero seconds and one second in. If I open up the animation drop down, we've got the graph here with a green line and two keyframes at the beginning and end, one at the one second point and one at the zero second point. You'll be familiar with this type of graph if you've ever played with the custom motion ease in and out stuff with uh, any of the other animation tools. Um, if not, you can see those square points are handles for each keyframe. So you can manipulate the shape of the graph just by pulling and dragging these around. So the way I've got it set up at the moment is it's going to ease into the motion or ease into the change of parameter. And then once it gets around this mark here where my mouse is, it's going to then ease out and slow down. If you don't want to have the handles, you can switch to linear interpolation up here and that will get rid of them and you'll have a straight line from point A to point B. We have constant value as well. So if I click on this one, then you'll see that we can go value of zero from zero seconds and then at the one second mark, then we're gonna to snap to a value of one. The buttons to the right are to control whether or not we have the handles. And um, for this one, we're just going to keep it simple and have it as linear. So what we're gonna be changing, we're gonna have a base layer and we're gonna have our final material applied as a label. So our base layer, which is gonna be visible at the beginning and slowly disappear, is going to be a wireframe down at the bottom there. And you'll see our diffuse has been replaced by that wireframe. So I'm gonna change blue to black and I might change the width as well, just decrease that. So now we have our base layer. I'm going to right click in the background again, go to not texture, we want to go to materials and plastic, and I'm going to plug the plastic into label. And you can see now our wireframe has completely disappeared because it's underneath that plastic label, which is covering the entire bit of 3D geometry. So if I apply the curve fade to opacity of the plastic, you'll notice that we immediately go back to the wireframe. That's because our animation at the moment indicated by that blue line there, or if I go into the curve fade, this blue line here is at the zero mark. And our keyframe, our first keyframe at the zero second mark is at a value of zero. So therefore our plastic is completely transparent. Now, if I drag it over to the one second mark, you'll notice that our opacity is now at one and our plastic is now opaque. So you can see it fully. So we can have this go over the course of the entire animation. So if I change the keyframe, the second keyframe to be a time of six seconds, uh, we can zoom out to see where it is, or there's this button in the top right, zoom to fit, and that will just fit our entire green line in there. So you can see now zero seconds, bottom left, six seconds and the bottom right. And if I drag across, it's just gonna take longer for that plastic to appear but we can make this more interesting so if i right click 
add in a procedural texture which is going to be spots and I plug our curve fade into the radius of our spots and our spots into the opacity of our plastic now we're going to be if I move it slightly along you'll see those spots are uncovering that wireframe underneath and because we're changing the radius from a value of 0 to 1 then the, the radius of those spots is getting bigger and bigger and we're uncovering the layer beneath so this is the opposite way around we want to start with the wireframe first and as you can see once you get to the one second mark at the six second mark our value of one isn't quite enough to cover the entire geometry either so we can change the first keyframe to have a value of three and our last keyframe to have a value of zero now you'll see by the end we're going to have a fully formed uh, product I do zoom to fit and at the beginning we're going to have a completely uncovered wireframe so I'm going to clean up my nodes by pressing the align nodes and work area button and let's see if we can make that more interesting still so if I right click in the background and go back down to animation curve fade I can plug this into the spots again and I'm plugging it into this the plus sign at the bottom of these four options and that's going to bring up all the parameters that are changeable so I will go to the fall off and what we want to do as you can see there is soften those edges and we want to be able to control that as well so we want the edges to be soft at the very beginning and um, by the end we don't want to have any sort of slight gaps or any gradients of sort of differing transparency. So we want the fall off to be a value of zero at the beginning and a value of three at the end. And I'm going to change that to linear interpolation as well. So I'll zoom to fit. And you may notice that we are starting at a time of two seconds, uh, 125 milliseconds and finishing one second later. So that's because I am currently at that two second and 125 millisecond mark. So wherever I am in the animation timeline, when I place our, my curve fade node into our material graph, that's where it's going to start. So make sure you just bring that back to zero and uh, it's not going to be able to surpass our first node. So I need to change my first node to zero and zero milliseconds change our second node to the six second mark no milliseconds and a value of three zoom to fit so i can see the whole graph and now if i scroll to the end you'll be able to see those spots with a bit of a soft edge as they haven't fully formed but by the end you'll see that plastic is fully visible and finally the last thing i wanted to do was add a bump map so let's scroll right to the end right click textures and noise texture i've scrolled to the end as well so that i can see our plastic if i'm changing our plastic at the beginning here then i'm not going to be able to see what i'm doing so if i go to the end i want to plug my noise texture into the bump of our plastic label and I'm going to reduce the scale down to 1 and I want the bump height to be 0 0.4 so we can animate this so if I go to animation and curve fade plug that into the noise texture we've got four options and I want the bump height so I'm going to go to curve fade animation and you can see in the time settings as well I started at 6 seconds, so it's going from 6 seconds to 7 seconds. I want it to just take place at the, in the last sort of section. So I'll go start for 4 seconds and I'll set the duration for 2 seconds. So we end at that 6 second mark where everything else ends. And we are currently... I'm going to turn the handles off. We're currently going from a value of 0 to a value of 1. And we previously set our bump height to 0 0.4 so I'm going to make our final value 0 0.4 and now you can see we're back to that texture that we previously made if 
I scroll to the beginning of the four second mark, you can see our plastic texture doesn't have that noise. It's uh, pretty fully reflective. As I go through, bomb texture is appearing, and by the end, it's fully formed. The last thing that we need to do is um, change these dials and other materials as well. So we could go in there and do exactly the same, but we want the settings to be exactly the same. Everything should stay the same so that it's all uniform. So I'm going to hold control and click on our two curve fades and the spots. I can right click and copy selection or control C. And now I have my materials here. There's only four of them and we've changed one already. So I'll go into Chrome, open the material graph. I'm going to change our metal to label. And I'm going to go into materials and add a wireframe. Just like we have with the other material, the main body material. So I'll change the settings to be the same. And you won't be able to see, you'll just see the chrome at the moment because we haven't added our nodes in. So we can paste control V or right click and paste. Now I'm going to zoom out so we can see those nodes. And I just need to plug in those spots into the opacity of our label. And you'll see there that chrome's disappeared. I can move it ahead. And just check yep, our chrome's coming through there. And let me double click on our curve fades, starting at zero seconds, starting at zero seconds, ending at six seconds. All looking good. So I can close that material graph, go to the glass, open up material graph. Now we want to see the dial underneath, so we're not too fussed about changing our glass to a wireframe. Uh, let's just paste and plug in our curve fades into the opacity of that glass. So it just appears over time by the end. Cancel that material graph and finally our label with the dial. So this is a similar layout. We've already got the label attached. We want to change our diffuse to wireframe. Let's put in the same numbers. This is copy and pasteable as well but since it's a simple material I'm just going to do it manually. And I'll right click, paste our spots in there and plug that into the opacity of the material of our label. And now you can see we've got a wireframe. Scroll through and that dial's coming through there. And it should be fully formed by this point as well. Let's align nodes just to make sure everything's looking good. Let's go into curve fade, zero seconds to six, zero to six, all looking good. And that is how to use the curve fade node. So it's a simple tool, but considering that you can plug it into almost any parameter of almost any material, you can really get creative with it and start to do something like these product reveals that I've just shown you how to do today. So if you've got any questions, then please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.